Ken going off like a bomb on the Florida coast. The most powerful storm ever to hit the panhandle. Winds of 155 miles an hour. Right to the winds of a Category 4 hurricane. Almost impossible to stand. The damage is catastrophic. The storm blowing away neighborhoods like a buzzsaw. Homes smashed to pieces. Cities underwater. Our team is taking you inside the ferocity of a disaster like we have rarely seen. I will tell you, in all my years of, of covering uh, hurricanes, this is the first time that I felt necessary to actually retreat from the room and into, into the hallway. Tonight, states of emergency as the danger sweeps across the southeast. Also tonight, homicide charges after that horrific limo crash killed 20. A shocking arrest, the feds moving in to stop an alleged plot to set off a bomb on election day in Washington. A massive dive on Wall Street, plunging over 800 points. What experts say is behind the hit to your 401k. New cases of that mystery illness striking children, leaving them suddenly paralyzed. The outbreak spreading to more states and an iconic American name on the brink of bankruptcy. Can Sears be saved? This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Hurricane Michael reporting live from Panama City, Florida. Good evening, everyone, from the Florida Panhandle, which tonight is reeling from the strongest storm to hit this area in recorded history. With some storms, it's the wind that's the biggest fear. With others, it's the water. And with this monster, it is both. Hurricane Michael ravaging the coast with 155 mile an hour winds, ripping homes and businesses to shreds, and storm surge leaving cities underwater. The governor is saying he is scared to death for people who didn't heed the warnings. I can tell you personally, it was at moments a frightening experience here today. The power of this storm like we have rarely seen. And tonight, it's showing few signs of losing steam as it barrels its way inland. And we'll take you through every moment with all our correspondents, starting with NBC's Gabe Gutierrez down the coast in Apalachicola. Tonight, Hurricane Michael is on the move. After slamming into the Florida Panhandle, the most powerful storm on record to make landfall here. In Mexico Beach, Florida, destruction. Homes submerged and in pieces, streets like rivers. Nearby Panama City Beach, a house ripped apart by the hurricane force winds. Windows shattered, buildings collapsed, and boats overturned. Communities are going to see unimaginable devastation. Michael rapidly intensified overnight into a monster Category 4 hurricane, eventually reaching sustained winds of 155 miles per hour. This used to be my backcourt. The wind and water so powerful, they trapped a storm chaser. Alabama and Georgia also under states of emergency. The ominous eye clearly visible from the space station. In Apalachicola, Florida, the rain began overnight as Michael's outer bands battered the Gulf Coast. By dawn, the wind and the rain picked up and the water started to rise, forcing us to move to higher ground. A massive storm surge flooded part of this historic downtown. Hey, we're seeing the raw power of Hurricane Michael just within the past hour or so. We have seen the winds intensify significantly. As you can see behind me, parts of this town are completely underwater. How would you describe this? It's catastrophic. Yeah. I mean, we were looking at some heavier, you know, some stronger winds, which we didn't get, but still, it was enough to do the damage like you see right here, and this is uh, replicated across the county, and plus some of the roads that are underwater now, we don't know what kind of damage we're going to have when the water recedes. Hundreds of thousands of people in Florida ordered to evacuate. We all knew this time was coming. The storm is upon us. There is nothing else to be gained by leaving where you are. You need to shelter in place. Beverly Giddens has lived here 35 years. I've never been in one like this. I was here doing dinners, and uh, that was scary enough, but this was, this was pretty awesome. She and so many others along the Gulf Coast now just beginning to assess Michael's fury. Gabe Gutierrez, NBC News, Apalachicola, Florida. This is Kerry Sanders. A powerful hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico, tonight extremely dangerous, crashing onto the coastline. 
and in some cases inland. It is getting insane here. An unprecedented storm surge zone, more than 500 miles from Anna Maria Island up and around to Pensacola Beach. It's 11.03 in the morning and the distance from the sand dunes to the Gulf of Mexico is about 50 feet. Already this beach has been cut in half. It's 12.20 p.m. The full force of the hurricane is yet to hit, and already the distance between the Gulf of Mexico and the sand dunes has been reduced to next to nothing. The storm surge is coming. Storm surge is driven by wind. As I was reporting today during Hurricane wow. Michael's strongest winds, Thank my you. safety helmet was ripped off my head. Off balance, I was steadied by the Weather Channel's Jim Cantori. The storm surge threat is not over. In some places, it may exceed 20 feet. And the power of those crashing waves could erode 75% of the Panhandle's sandy beaches, adding to the problems, the unique geography here. The corner of Florida's Gulf Coast is shaped like a catcher's mitt. The area is subject to higher storm surges because of the shallow topography that extends more than 50 miles off the coast. That lack of depth means the water has nowhere to go but inland. In some areas, that storm surge threat is now over, but there could still be problems because an unusually high tide is expected late tonight. Lester? All right, Kerry Sanders. And knowing that we were no match for this storm, my crew and I rode this one out in our hotel. But even that proved dicey when the powerful eye wall blew through, turning our view of the storm into a risk simply not worth taking. Within minutes, conditions deteriorated right outside my window. The power is now out. We were outside for a little bit. Uh, we were forced inside. Hurricane Michael proving to be everything it was, uh, was advertised to be. Joining my colleagues in another room with a balcony, we went live on air, an unobstructed and frightening view of Michael at its most ferocious. As I have my hand on this window, I can feel it bowing. 150 mile per hour winds howling like jet engines. It's like an airplane taking off. Have you ever stood near the end of a runway? Fellow hotel guests hunkering down inside hallways. As conditions worsened and with safety the utmost priority, we barricaded ourselves in a room. We put this mattress in front of the window. You know, we want to be on the air, but uh, we've got to take care of each other. And so we're going to do that. So uh, know that we're safe, um, but we're going to have to sign off. Finally, what seemed to be the worst of the storm passing us. The visibility much better now. So I think we're, uh, as the uh, radar indicates, we seem to be on the backside of this thing. Surveying from our covered overlook, we could see damage everywhere. And one floor above, in my producer's room, the hotel window shattered. This came up very quickly. This morning I was even questioning, are we sure we're in the right place? Within a few hours, it was incredible. Thankfully, my colleague was not in that room when the glass blew out, but rather with the rest of us barricaded behind that mattress. We want to go now to NBC's Mariana Atencio. She's down the coast in Port St. Joe, where the storm has knocked out our team's broadcast communications. Mariana, what can you tell us from there? Lester, we are almost here. I'm standing 10 minutes from Mexico Beach. And right now, Joe is virtually an island. It looks like a massive tornado had hit. Just with the roofs peeled off, motels, the water completely blown out, destroyed. And then human where we go, people desperate, asking us All to right, obviously having trouble with Mariana's communications there. Of, of, uh, all the phone uh, uh, service certainly being disrupted by this. But we are joined on another line now by Linda Albrecht. She's a councilwoman for Mexico Beach. The community hit hard when Hurricane Michael came ashore. We saw some of the damage there. Can you tell us if you've had any casualties, any injuries? This I do not know. Um, I can just tell you that much of the town is underwater. Uh, four or five blocks away from the Gulf of Mexico, houses are underwater. Um, but I do not know anything about the casualties. The police chief was going around uh, this afternoon, early evening, to check on anybody who had decided not to leave. Um, and he was just checking it with a, uh, a rescue, uh, hopefully that he would find some people that he could rescue. 
All right. Well, Linda, thank you for talking to us. Appreciate it, and best of luck there. As the storm crashes its way inland, they're bracing for impact in Florida's capital city and a big college town. Matt Bradley has made his way to Tallahassee for us. Matt, what's the latest from there? Lester, this is one of the most powerful storms this city has ever seen, and it's a double threat tonight, not just from hurricane force winds, but from the threat of tornadoes, and that's going to last till tomorrow morning. But the real problem here is the trees. They're the pride and joy of Tallahassee. They cover about 50% of the city, and as you can see, they're going down all over the place. And this is emblematic of what's going on here in Florida's capital. Just across the street from this huge downed tree is yet another downed tree. They're causing extensive damage, and they're turning lights out throughout the city. But we haven't even seen the worst of the winds yet here, Lester, so it's going to be a dangerous night ahead. Matt Bradley, thank you. And the question now as the storm rages, is the federal response ready to move in? Peter Alexander is at the White House monitoring developments from there. Peter, what are you hearing? Hey, Lester, good evening. The president was briefed in the Oval Office this afternoon by his Secretary of Homeland Security and the head of FEMA. President Trump says the White House has been in constant contact with state and local officials, saying plans are in place to send resources, food and water. But tonight, rather than monitor the disaster response from here, the president is in Erie, Pennsylvania for a private fundraiser followed by a campaign rally. Asked if that was appropriate tonight, the president said he didn't want to disappoint his supporters who'd been waiting in line. He says he will visit the region, the hurricane zone, early next week. Lester. All right, Peter, thank you. And as the winds die down here in Panama City, it is going to be a dangerous night ahead for millions across the southeast as the storm continues north. Al Roker joins us with the latest track of Michael. Al, where's it heading? Well, Lester, it's heading into Georgia right now. Tornado watches from northern Georgia all the way down to Gainesville. Right now, it's 50 miles southwest of Albany, Georgia, 115 mile per hour winds, moving northeast at 13 miles per hour. The track brings it as a Category 3 storm. First time in, they, in 120 years they've had a Category 3 come across. Across Georgia, it continues on into South Carolina and then makes its way out into the Atlantic around Norfolk. It's the first Category 4 la landfall in the Florida Panhandle. It's the strongest October hurricane on record in the United States and the strongest U.S. landfall since 1992 in Andrew. You can see we've got tropical force winds still through tomorrow making a way all the way up into the Carolinas. We've also got storm surge and anywhere from five to seven inches of rain moving from the Gulf all the way into the parts of the mid-Atlantic states. Lester? All right, Al, thank you. We're all stunned at how quickly this thing blew through here. As Michael blasts the coast, we're seeing two disasters collide here in Florida. For months, the coastline has been plagued with uh, a red tide that's been making life miserable for residents. The question that many are asking now is, how will Michael's fury impact this toxic invasion? Tonight, Michael is hitting Florida with devastating force, and right in the middle of another slow motion crisis happening along this coast, one that's turned into a catastrophe for Captain Karen Hugert. It's almost like a science fiction movie. You get in your boat and you go out and you see death everywhere. The commercial and charter fisherwoman now struggling just to make ends meet. During the week, I'm some days only taking in 48 to $50 on a weekday. Florida is being battered by red tide, a yearly algae bloom that feeds on a variety of pollutants like fertilizer and wastewater. This year, one of the most powerful ever, killing fish and producing toxic air. And now there are grave concerns about Hurricane Michael. Will this monster storm push the red tide away or make it even worse? It could go either way and we have no way of predicting right now. Red tide already stretches 145 miles along Florida's Gulf coastline and is creeping to the Atlantic coast, killing more than 3,000 tons of marine life. The normally crystal clear waters, a murky brown, beaches left empty. In August, the governor declaring a state of emergency. For 15 days or so, we did essentially zero in sales. And scientists warn algae blooms will get worse in other parts of the U.S and across the world. The warming of our planet means the warming of the oceans. So when you mix that up with pollution, with sewage waste, with fertilizer runoff, these events can be incredibly catastrophic to the environment. Tonight, Captain Hugert hoping the tides will turn into a wake-up call. We all need to take pause 
and realize what's going on here is awful. Experts tell us it will be two to three weeks before we know the impact of the storm on the red tide. We'll turn now to some of the day's other big headlines. Today was the worst day on Wall Street since February. The Dow plunging more than 800 points and the S&P plummeting over 3% as tech stocks dropped amid growing trade tensions with China. A major development tonight in the case of that deadly limo crash that killed 20 people in upstate New York. Police today arrested the operator of the limo company, charging him with criminally negligent homicide. NBC's Tom Costello has late details. Four days after that horrific crash, state police arrested the man who they say runs the limo company, 28-year-old Nauman Hussein. The sole responsibility for that motor vehicle being on the road on Saturday rests with Nauman Hussein. Police say Hussein had received written notices that driver Scott Lisanikia did not have the license to drive the limo, which had been ordered off the road following multiple safety violations. Hussein's attorney says the state bears responsibility for an unsafe intersection. This road was a problem. It was a known problem to the state of New York. The limo company is owned by Naman Hussein's father, Shahid, who's in Pakistan. Meanwhile, the families of the 20 people who died are now preparing for funerals. Among them, Michael Ukai's parents. He was my baby. He was my heart. He was everything to me. And now he's gone. Tom Costello, NBC News. We're getting a look at perhaps the biggest clues yet in a mystery making headlines around the world. New images of what's being described as an assassination squad allegedly sent after a Washington Post columnist who vanished at the Saudi consulate in Turkey. Andrea Mitchell with details. Tonight, new images on Turkish television released by authorities there, showing an alleged 15-man Saudi hit team arriving in Istanbul on two private planes, then leaving their hotels. Their suspected target, a Saudi dissident, Washington Post writer Jamal Khashoggi, last seen entering the Saudi consulate in Istanbul the same day. Some Turkish officials tell NBC News they believe he was killed inside. Today, the White House demanding answers from the Saudi rulers after an emotional appeal from his fiance. We're in contact with her now, and uh, we want to bring her to the White House. It's a very sad situation. It's a very bad situation, and we want to get to the bottom of it. Khashoggi is a leading critic of Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the young leader closely allied with the president and his son-in-law, Jared Kushner. Kushner, National Security Advisor John Bolton, and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo have all talked to the Crown Prince about Khashoggi as pressure builds for answers. If this man was murdered in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, if it did happen, they would be held to pay. The Saudi leaders denying any involvement in the journalist's disappearance. Andrea Mitchell, NBC News, Washington. Still ahead, new fears that a mysterious illness causing paralysis in children may be spreading. Also, an alleged plot to bomb Washington on Election Day foiled by the FBI. Plus, the potentially devastating news for an iconic American retailer. We'll be right back. I'll be right back. With moderate to severe Crohn's disease, I was there. Just not always where I needed to be. Is she all right? I hope so. So I talked to my doctor about Humira. I learned Humira is for people who still have symptoms of Crohn's disease after trying other medications. And the majority of people on Humira saw significant symptom relief, and many achieved remission in as little as four weeks. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious, sometimes fatal infections and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Before treatment, get tested for TB. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas Areas where certain fungal infections are common. And if you've had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores, don't start Humira if you have an infection. Be there for you and them. Ask your gastroenterologist about Humira. With Humira, remission is possible. We are going to replace candy with some healthy Halloween treats today. These are called veggie fruit chews. Mine tastes like poop. -poo. Mine tastes like broccoli. Yes, I want candy. Bring on the candy. Crest has you covered. I didn't think I smoked that much, but I still got oral cancer, and it came back twice. My tip is, if you smoke, you're a smoker, just like I was. 
You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Salon Pos. We're the world leader in medicinal pain patches. Our latest innovation, Salon Pos Lidocaine. Using hydrogel-based technology with the maximum strength lidocaine you can buy without a prescription. Salon Pos Lidocaine. Nothing has proven stronger or more effective against pain. Tomorrow on Today. A special live event with former First Lady Michelle Obama to empower and celebrate girls all over the world. Performances by Kelly Clarkson, Jennifer Hudson, and Megan Trainer, and celebrity guests all morning long, only on Today. Next tonight, new fears that a mysterious disease is spreading in the U.S. and causing partial paralysis in children in at least 16 states with no known cure. It has doctors baffled. NBC's Miguel Almaguer has the latest. Hi. Tonight, doctors in Chicago say two-year-old Julia Payne has acute flaccid myelitis, or AFM, the rare polio-like disease on the rise. Her mother thought she had a cold. I took her to the ER because she turned blue. I noticed she couldn't hold her head up anymore and she couldn't use her right arm. Doctors believe AFM, which can cause partial paralysis, is linked to viruses, but say there's no known cure hand washing the best protection. The CDC confirming at least 38 infections in 16 states, now investigating even more, including a new cluster in Illinois. We started to see clusters of it back in 2014, then it went away relatively in 2015, and then we saw a resurgence of cases again in 2016. Tonight, doctors scrambling to solve a medical mystery. Why are some children falling ill from such a dangerous disease? Miguel Almaguer, NBC News. Coming up, the election day bomb plot. The FBI says it foiled today. A car you can command when you're nowhere near it. Does that require mind control? No. Just some mind-blowing engineers from the Ford Motor Company and Pivotal who developed Ford Pass, allowing you to reach out to your car from wherever you are to check your fuel level, unlock your doors, and start your engine. So when you're ready to go, your car is too. Magic can't make digital transformation happen, but we can. That's the power of Pivot, part of Dell Technologies. Some moments can change everything. You can't always predict them, but you can game plan for them. For 150 years, generations of families have chosen Pacific Light for retirement and life insurance solutions to help them reach their goals. Being ready for wherever life leads.